So it's been raining again. So I've been on uh, websites looking for quartz stuff. Uh, just idly looking around like you do, uh, looking for my next build. And I came across something I'd never seen before. Um, I've not seen much about this, uh, but it's a flight controller, flight control, from FreeSky. They've never made a flight controller as far as I'm aware. Um, I actually found two. They make this one, which I don't know if the camera is focusing on, is the um, XSR F3O, which is their F3 flight controller. And they make an F4O, which is their F4 flight controller. Um, I got the F3 one because it's cheaper. Uh, it's about 10 bucks cheaper actually, um, which is not a huge amount. Um, what really interested me with these, and there's nothing in this box, I wonder if you can guess from that what's actually up with this flight controller. So it's got the receiver built in. Um, so from the description on the website, and I haven't actually looked yet, this has got the XSR receiver built into the flight controller. Um, which is really interesting, that means you don't need to find a spot for it on your stack um, and it's already cabled. Um, I'm guessing that the S-Bus is all cabled in and I'm guessing that the telemetry is all cabled in. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any way of uh, actually doing that any other way, so if it's not, that's going to be a problem. Um, so it comes in, comes in a bag, actually, it comes in a bag in the box and I know you can't read that on the screen uh, but it actually answers my question right here it says um, UART2 is the RX and UART... Uh, where is it? 16 channels SBUS to UART2 and smart port of the XSR to UART3 there we go, so the SBUS goes to UART2 and the smart port goes to UART3 uh, it says it has an uh, F303 and it says on here it has an MPU 6050 for the acceler accelerometer. Um, that's really interesting because it says it has a 6000 on the website. Um, so I don't know which one it's got. There's not a massive difference between the 6000 and the 6050 from what I've read. The, the main difference I think is that the 6050 is a bit cheaper and doesn't have some of the bus options so it can't clock as fast. Uh, but as far as the signal goes, they're exactly the same. Um, it also comes with a, a manual, if you can call it a manual. It's um, just if I open this up, it's your normal FreeSky A4 page of text. Nothing on the back, and that's it. It doesn't actually tell you much, but it does have the pinouts, which is very. In, well, get in shot. It does have the pinouts here, which is actually really handy because the pinouts are really hard to read on the on the thing. Um, the other thing it comes with is a bunch of pins. Um, these can, you can solder these on. I'm not going to solder those on, so that's completely pointless for me. Yeah, so we'll we'll um we'll take a look at the board and see how we go. I need to change the lens to zoom in with this camera because I haven't got a particularly great YouTube camera. Uh, so I will be back. Alright, so I zoomed it in a bit and the um, the first thing that got me on this um, I've got a pokey stick here is the um, receive antennas. You'll notice that the, this is the board is pointing that way so the receive antennas come out of the side and the USB comes out of the back. Um, I haven't seen a flight controller with the USB out of the back for quite some time now. Um, that's a pain in the bum. Most um, most quads, it's difficult to get to the back of the stack. It's much easier to get to the side. So, personally, I would have preferred if this board was that way around. And, if I get it off of that, there we go, that'll we'll hold still. Um, I would have preferred if the board was that way around, uh, with the receive antennas sticking out the front, or even better, sticking sticking out the back would have been, would have been better. And the, um, the USB on the side there. And you could turn the board and mount it this way. You just need to remember to, to reorientate your gyros because currently they're that way, so you need to move them 90 degrees. Not a big deal. You could do that, except for the 
other thing that I've noticed, if I can get this in shot, you may just be able to read. It says M1 there, and well, that one doesn't actually say anything. It should say M2, and this corner says M3, and that corner says M4. So the motor outputs are in the corners, and they would be in the correct corners if you mount it the correct way around. But that's not very convenient. Um, that's a little annoying. It's not a deal breaker, but it is a little annoying. Um, so yeah, the only the only other real op the, well the only other real input that you've got here is um, this is the UART three port here because uh, UARTs one and two are both taken up by the receiver. Um, this is a, a USB connection. I said USB. I meant um, SD. This is a an SD card connection. This is the USB. This is the SD connection. So the SD cards would go in the slot. Oh, it's difficult to do on camera like that. Um, that's actually quite a nice slot. It's got a little little bit of movement, but it feels like it's in uh, in there, and it's not coming out easily. Seems to lock it in, so that's good. Um, so yeah, so up here you've got the uh, lead strip. It's labelled lead, so it's probably um, that'll be ground on the end there, and positive there, and the signal up here. You've got uh, motor wires five, six, seven, and eight, so you can have eight eight motor outputs on this. Um, I don't really. Well, I guess if you're not running a quad, that'd be fine. These are the um, same ports that you get on the side of the XSR, and I have absolutely no idea what they actually do. Um, these ports over here, they're, they're labelled on the bottom. So you've got the VBAT port there, and the current port there. Um, oh, that's another thing with this board, I've, after reading the instructions. Um, this will run off of between 5 and 10 volts which means that you need a, a PDB. Now I've read this one on the um, the website before I ordered it, so I actually ordered a PDB with it, which is uh, handy, although I still have no idea what I'm going to use this board for. I've got a couple of ideas, but um, nothing nothing jumping out at me at the moment. Uh, but yeah, you get the, the lead strip there. Um, and now there's a bunch of other pins. Oh, so this is the this is the bind button here. It took me a while to work this one out next to it. This is the boot button for the flight controller. Um, it's really difficult to press. I'll have to, have to hold the board while I do it. You can press it. Uh, nope, that didn't do it. I managed to do it earlier with a pencil. Ah, there we go. It's just that little black bit in the middle there. You can press it down there. So the boot button is really difficult to press, but the bind button is a piece of cake. Um, I forget what these other pins are, so I'll turn the board over because they are definitely labelled better on the other side. There we go. Um, so these are the OSD pins. That's right. This has got the um, the OSD built in, so it's got it uses the Betaflight OSD, which is good. Um, so that's your your ground and your video in and your video out. So whatever I do, I'll probably end up using those. And these are your uh, S bus ports. So what you can actually do, uh, S bus or smart port? Not S bus, sorry, smart port ports. So what you can um, do here is uh, plug in other sensors into um, into here, um, like you normally can with a uh, with smart port stuff. Um, Honestly, I only really use the, the VBAT, and this board has a VBAT sensor. Um, it was that one there. So you would just cable that into your PDB's voltage and it will read it. It's got a, a, divi a voltage divider circuit there, so it can read it fine. And that's it. There's, there's not really anything else to this. Like I said, they do an F3 version and an F4 version. Um, I got the F3 because I just thought I'd get the F3. Um, so the only other real thing I noticed that some of these components are really close to the edge of the board. You've got um, something there that's right near 
something you want to be soldering. You've got this over here, right, right on the edge of the board. Um, I didn't think there was anything on the top. Uh, you've got some stuff over here. I don't really know what that is. Um, and obviously the switches, but they're they're fine. Uh, it's really the the components are really pushed out. As it looks like they've they've uh, had some trouble squeezing it all on the board. To be honest, um, so I don't think the board layout is particularly great. Uh, the definitely having the USB at the back is going to be a pain, um, and having the uh, receive antenna both on the same side pointing the same way um, is going to be a bit of a pain. Um, these were also bent in the box. I've straightened them out. Um, so yeah, so that's the that's the board. I guess the, the, the next thing we need to really test is plugging it into the computer and seeing how we go. Um, so we'll stick it on the on the computer. Okay, so we're on the computer now. Um, I've bound the flight controller to my radio. Um, it pretty much binds exactly the same way as every other FreeSky receiver. So you just um, put the radio into bind mode, hold down the bind button, power the thing, wait for the light to go green, take the power away, it's bound. Um, I already have a video on that exactly the same. Uh, so I'll plug it in. So all I've done on the radio is I've created a, um, a blank model and bound it. I haven't done anything else. Uh, so that's it plugged in. Yep, and it shows up as a COM port. That's a good sign. So hit connect. And we're in. So it obviously already has... Oh, it's even working, look. So it already has beta flight uh, installed. Oh yeah, that's the front of the board. Oops. So yeah, so... Already has some sort of beta flight installed. Um, and the board is working straight off the bat. I haven't done anything to it. Uh, so we've got a gyro, accelerometer, uh, no data flash, it's fine, it's got an SD card. Uh, so yeah, if we go into ports, yeah, so it looks like the ports are already configured. Yeah, the serial RX, that'll be the S bus, and this one's already set to smart port. So that means if I go over to the radio, I should be getting the voltage. How do I show the voltage on this thing? So, sorry this is a bit boring, you won't see this. Yeah, if I go into sensors, I'm already seeing all of the sensors. So I haven't actually had to do a single thing. And I can see the RSSI, I can see the VBAT it says 0 0.3 volts. That would be because there's no battery plugged in. Um, yeah, but I'm getting everything out of it. I'm even getting a current reading. Um, oh yeah, that would be because it has a current sensor. Okay, so on the configuration page, it's already set up for one shot. Yep, there's your S bus setting, that's good. VBAT is enabled, and your current sensor is enabled. Um, that would be because it's got an analog current pin. Um, it's set for 2K gyro updates and 1K PID loop. All right, fair enough. Don't normally set mine like that. And here we go, so telemetry is already turned on. Uh, black box is turned on with the SD card, and the OSD is turned on. Alright, so this should be just the standard PIDs. Here's the receiver setting. Oh, would you look at that? So I haven't had to do a single thing, and the receiver's already working. So it's Excellent. Just play with the model. Let's do spins, and flips of that way, and rolls. That's the throttle there. Yeah, how good is that? Alright, so it's got RSSI on channel 8. I wonder if that actually works. It's a bit hard to tell because the radio is right here. Doesn't matter. Alright, so we go into modes. Yeah, there's nothing set in modes. Uh, motors. Ooh, it's a bit weird. I um, wonder if this means it thinks it's armed. How do you... Yeah, it did. So, stick arm. I must have stick armed it by mistake. There we go. So that would have been... Yeah, that would have been the PID loop winding up. Um, Alright, 
like going to OST. Yeah, so it has an OST. Um, but what more can be said? Um, this must be the beta flight default OST settings. I've never really seen them before. Uh, lead strip, black box. So it's already set to SD card. This will be the. Hmm. Oh, that would be because I armed it. This would be the SD card that I put in while it was on the bench. So it's already written some data to the SD card by the looks of it. And CLI. So one of the things I wanted to do in the CLI is actually uh, test the version number. Yeah, so to do that, we're just going here. We do version. So this tells us the. Um, well, it tells us everything. It's running beta flight. It's running beta flight 3.2.0, um, compiled on May the 24th. That was a while ago now. Um, and this is the target. Now, this is the interesting bit. Uh, it's FR Sky F3. That makes sense because that's what the board is. But when we um, will disconnect, and I don't ever remember seeing that as an option. Let it download all the boards. It's Motor Lab because it was the last one I picked. Yeah, so there is no no target for that at the moment. That would be why it's running 3.2 at the while I've recorded this, um, 3.2 is a pre-release version. Um, the latest stable, if I just pick the Motor Lab one, the latest stable is that one, 3.1.7. Um, so yeah, so it looks like it won't be getting stable firmware till 3.2 is released, and from what I have read, that's at least a month away. Well, that's interesting. I have nothing to um, to use it in at the moment, so that's not a big deal for me. Uh, but it probably means yeah, it seems to work. Um, I'd need to give it a test really to find out whether there's any issues. I don't think there's any major issues. Um, let's see what else we've got. Oh, this is yeah. This won't show me any fun, any funky thing because this is the um, stable version of Beta Flight. Oh well, that's. Um, interesting if nothing else so yeah so out of the box it comes ready to work you can basically just plug it in solder it up and away you go uh, but it is running a pre-release version of beta flight um, I'm not sure I feel particularly comfortable about running pre-release versions it's not even a release candidate so it's still being worked on um, but yeah I guess this is a cutting edge board so it's going to have a cutting edge uh, version of beta flight. So that's really it. Until I get this into a quad, there's not a lot else I can really sort of show off. Um, I'd love to test the, the VBAT and the current sensor, but I don't have anything set up at the moment that I can test that off of. Um, yeah, I mean, apparently this does D-Shot as well, um, from what I read. Um, so I'd love to test that too. But yeah, right now I have nothing to put it in. Uh, so yeah, this is this is going to be it. This is just the the first look at this flight controller because it was something I didn't even know existed, and I haven't really seen much about it. Um, so yeah, look, give this a thumbs up if you thought it was vaguely interesting. Uh, consider subscribing because eventually, at one point, I'm going to be putting a video up with this in a quad for a test. Um, so yeah, thanks very much.